We are live. I'm a little shiny. That's good. We are live. On Now or Never, we have a special guest joining us today who's officially in the built dude. Um, waiting for you guys to come on in and check out our live stream so you can see who our guest is. Do, do, do. He shall be joining us any minute now. It's Jesse McCartney. Aha. Here we go. Boom. Hello, Cable at 86. Como están, como están, como están? Hey, hey Janelle. How, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm here in the studio. I'm getting ready for our uh, interview here in just a minute. I know. You are. You made it to ESPN LA. Are you excited or what? I'm super pumped. I love ESPN. I love your show. I love what you guys are doing. should be exciting. Yeah, it's cool because we get to mix up a little bit of everything. It's not just sports. We talk pop culture. We'll be dabbling nice. a little bit with your music. Give us some details. Um, Got it. Let's talk, we're going to get a little bit personal. This is what the Instagram Live is for. We talk about random things. So let's start with this. What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Ay, ay, ay. That's really that, hard. Uh, so hard. That's like yeah. asking what my favorite sports player is. Um, I'm going <laughs> to say, I'm going to say one of my favorites is Pulp Fiction. Okay. That's a classic. Classic. Can't go wrong with that. How about um, Drink of Choice, if you drink uh, ooh, I'm a whiskey guy, so I like I like bourbon, neat. I like bullet as like an everyday, but um, I also like I'm a big IPA guy too. I was just in Oregon recently, and they're like a big Oregon state or a big beer state, so I like a, a good like local IPA from wherever I am. IPAs are nice and heavy, and I'm also a whiskey gal myself. I, I do a nice old fashioned, believe it or not. Old fashioned work. Choice. Um, so you were just in Oregon, and it's like a random fact that I know. Um, there's a lot of alpaca farms in Oregon, and if I could be any animal, I'd probably be an alpaca. What would you be? There's alpaca farms in Oregon, really? How do you yes. know such a fact? Yeah, because I'm a weirdo, and I love alpacas and llamas. Were you an alpaca <laughs> farmer once upon a time? Maybe in another life. Maybe right. in another life. But if you could be any animal, what would you be? Growing up, I loved giraffes. I was a big, like, I always used to walk around with a little baby giraffe. So okay. I don't know why, but I don't know. I've always had, like, a... Giraffes? Just, yeah, I've always been, I just love giraffes. Uh, Lion King is coming up soon, a new remake. Are we excited about this or we're not? Lion King was one of my favorite Disney movies as a kid, so I'm super pumped about that one. I actually saw it in my, uh, in my, uh, in my uh, queue on, on my TV, like, it's like the old one though, because they're like right. prepping. So they're like, watch the old one, because wait till you see how good the new one is. Um, big, big Lion King fan. That's really cool. I'm gonna go back into the music. Talk to us a little bit about how the music industry has changed, like the power of social media and how we stream everything now. Like no longer selling albums. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, social media has um, greatly changed everything, right? I mean, now it's a matter of. Um, what you're doing every day uh, and what you're eating for lunch more than it is um, necessarily your music. The music's important and it is the foundation and the backbone, but <laughs> I think now, now more than ever as an artist, you have to be willing to share the sort of behind the curtain moments and the, you know, the things that go on behind the scenes that you otherwise once never used to share. Um, at least, you know, growing up, I didn't have to. And now it's, it's a completely different world. Yeah, because you've been in the industry for so long, but now it's like you have to be even more vulnerable, like in sharing your personal side as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to be, you know, the fans just want to see you and they want to know who who they're investing their time and energy into. And uh, they want to know what you stand for and you're, they want to hear a voice behind, you know, outside of the actual album or the song or whatever it is you're promoting. Yeah. Well, switching it back, you see my random, random pace of interview style. You'll get used to it. Tell us about your first memory in the sports world. What's like the first game that you ever went to that you can remember? Ooh, it would have to be probably a Yankees game back in like the nice. Jeter, back in the Jeter era. Um, I 
I grew up like, you know, when the late nineties. Um, okay. So like, you know, Derek Jeter, Paul, o you know, Paul O'Neill, Bernie Williams, Scott Brocious, Chuck yeah. Knobloch, like, you know, Martinez, like one of the best, arguably one of the best Yankee teams to ever play. Um, and it was at the old stadium back before they built the new one where there was just like, there was so much history and like Babe Ruth used to play there. I mean, it was like right? one of those places where like peanuts from like the 1900s are still on the ground, you know, the early 1900s. It was, oh it was a place where we'd go. My father used to take me all the time as a kid. So a lot of great memories about watching the Yankees growing up as a New Yorker. Well, tell me this. Um, recently, they announced that there were like maybe potentially be changes in the MLB. What are your thoughts on that? Like having a universal hitter and then changing um, like how, how long it takes to pitch. I think it's like 20 seconds, right? Or something like that. I don't know if you I had like, a chance to I like, that. I like that. I like the pitch rule. I think that that's fair. I mean, the game is so long already. You right. have three, you know, you're lucky if you get a three hour game, right? So, uh, you know, and, and for regular season games, I think they're looking at ratings too. I think they're looking at like who's tuning in and who has three hours during the week to watch a Yankee, you know, even the right. Yankees. I mean, the, one of the, you know, the, the most popular ball club in the league. You got to speed the pitching up. Um, I don't know what what's the new hitting rule that they're talking about. I think they're trying to have a universal hitter, and then also another uh, rule. Yeah, and then another rule I think as well is like you can change a pitcher after every three uh, three batters or something like that. I mean, look, the game has to progress, right? I mean, mm -hmm. things have to progress as technology uh, moves forward. We have to be willing to move forward with technology, otherwise. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it happens in every sport. Um, right. You know, I think cha the challenging, I think, was the biggest thing for baseball to get over when, when it came down to challenging uh, play calls right. on the field. But if you look at every other sport, for the most part, you can do that. Um, I mean, the How game has to move forward. How like, spicier? Like, I feel like the NBA does an amazing job, you know, having All-Star Weekend and, like, all these fun, like, events. And, like, the athletes are so involved on social media as well. What do you think the MLB has to do to make it to have more of our generation like tune in and maybe not be as long? It's a good question. I wish, uh, <laughs> I mean, if I knew the answer, I'd probably be uh, working for MLB. But I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but maybe I don't know. I mean, I think, I think moving the game along and I think doing um, maybe more charity stuff with, with kids, and I know they do some, but uh, more, more charitable work and also just like more stuff off the field where players are getting involved with, you know, social aspects and social yeah. things off yeah. the field and um, their communities. And I don't know. Uh, I feel like the NFL does a really good job with that, with their players. And um, okay. I feel like it's hard to – like, you just don't know baseball players as well as you know NBA players or as well as you know NFL players. So, I don't know. Maybe more yeah. off, the wheel, off the field work. Maybe. So, you mentioned um, charity work. Is there any organizations that you're – working with right now or things that you like to do to give back to the community? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love ed anything and everything that involves children. I work with um, uh, a, a foundation called Love Your Melon, where um, they sell uh, really amazing beanies. Um, and then they give one to a child in need at a, at a children's hospital. And all of the a lot of the half the proceeds go to funding research for cancer, ch ch pediatric cancer and other diseases. Um, with young kids. Um, they're just an amazing company. They're out of Minnesota. I've been working with them for a long time. Uh, absolutely love them. Um, St. Jude's Children's Hospital. I like to go and yeah. visit, go say hi to the kids, go, you know, it really changes their whole day when you get to like, just pop in, say hel a quick hello, maybe sing a song. I, a few months ago, yeah. I went into the uh, Children's Hospital here in LA and did a few songs um, just to kind of, you know, and honestly, it's like, it's the most fulfilling thing for me outside of my everyday career is, is doing stuff like that. And I think, right. you know, well, it's sort of your, your responsibility at the same time to, to make sure you do stuff like that. Well, one last question before I let you go and we hit it off and now or never. Tell me this, what is like a normal day for Jess McCartney look like when you're not in the studio, you're not acting, what do you like to do? Sure. So it's funny because it's not really that exciting when I'm not on stage <laughs> or performing or, performing or writing or like doing anything in front of the cameras, uh, it's really a boring day. I wake up, I make my coffee, like your average guy. I like sit there at the kitchen Are you counter. A, do you like uh, 
do you make it like in a normal pot? So I'm a big I'm a big coffee snob. So I roast and grind my own beans and like do okay. my own like single cup uh, drip. Uh, okay. And it's got to be like a really really good medium blend. Anyway, okay. I could go on and on about coffee. So I have my coffee in the morning, <laughs> and then um, I sit. I have some breakfast, um, but usually I just have coffee. I'm not a big breakfast guy. I usually go to the gym at around ten. Okay. Go to the gym. I'm done by like I don't know eleven thirty, and then like from noon on, I have meetings or phone calls or whatever I have to do on the phone. And then yeah, and then if I go out for dinner, like go out around five or six. But usually I just make cook at home something really boring and healthy. <laughs> And that's like my weekly, that's like my weekly day grind. I mean, and but then, it's not you know, of course, though. there's, there's like healthy. cool, exciting stuff in between, but. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's, that's a day in the life. Well, thank you so much for jumping on the live stream. Guys, make sure you tune in tonight because you're going to see, we're going to talk about his latest single and other fun stuff and sports, of course. So don't miss it. Jesse, we'll see you soon. Thank you so awesome. much. We'll see you in a few. All right. Bye. Bye.